All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the last free business marketing webinar put on by Southwest Coda. Um, the SBDC and Visit Durango will be taking over this series moving forward. They're currently planning it. So um, stay tuned. We'll let you know everyone that stopped by and listened to any of these webinars. So um, thanks for your participation and um, huge shout out to all our presenters for putting this together. They've donated their time and volunteered their, to share their knowledge um, on these topics that are really important to increase your brand's online presence during these um, unprecedented times. So with that, um, stay tuned to Southwest Colorado Disaster Assistance.org. We've got a lot of different things evolving there, including um, we're gonna be building out resource pages for different sectors of the business community to follow the public health orders and also best practices and innovations, strategies for innovations on how to navigate during these times. So um, be sure to follow that and we'll be in touch with, um, a we're actually gonna archive all of these webinars into a library online so you can go back and reference them. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce Paul Eckenrode from 360 Durango, and he actually has hosted a few different webinars since, since today. So he's going to be closing this out. This was actually his idea to do this webinar series, so it's awesome to have him finish it up. But he is going to be um, teaching about Google Analytics. So. Paul, I will let you take it from here and we can do Q and A's um, as they come up or afterwards. So I'll be watching that toolbar if anyone has any questions, but otherwise, Paul, I'll let you take it from here. Well, MJ, thank you. Great job on all of this. I'm looking forward to the resource being available to other people um, and it just in the future in general. Um, so thanks for joining today. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, ways to use data um, I'll just start by uh, a phrase that you should really think about and maybe even write down. It's something that an uh, old stockbroker taught me one day. He said, um, paralysis by analysis. Now, what does that really mean? So with data, um, obviously you need good data in so that you can create good data to come out. And then the whole point is to analyze that data to allow you to not only gain insight and knowledge, but um, to give you actionable uh, steps. You need to be able to act upon data. So really from um, just a data analysis standpoint, you know, these tools are great. It's, if you're a numbers person, it's really, really fun um, to look in and, and see the insight, but always go into analysis of data with a goal in mind. You are gonna be trying to figure out actionable steps associated with your data analysis. So, um, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of ancillary knowledge that you'll kind of pick up as you go along, but always be looking for things that you can do. So data analysis doesn't really matter unless you uh, do something with it. So uh, try to avoid paralysis by analysis. So what I'm gonna do with Google Analytics, you know, that's what I do with it. I go in and, and try to figure out things that I can do or learn and then apply and implement. Um, and what we're going to kind of work on today is uh, just looking at some overview. What are the different things that you'll find within Google Analytics? What are action steps that you could take, things that you can learn, and uh, just kind of go from there. Um, I will say that uh, this is a definite basic look into using Google Analytics. Uh, it can go a lot higher. Uh, there are custom views and filters that could be created. Uh, you can create overview or very specific reports. You can set up custom dashboards. You can um, have your reports automatically emailed to you or pushed over to Google Data Studio. Um, I'm not gonna go into all that stuff. I'm really just gonna focus on looking at the tool of Google Analytics and how to use it. So, um, first things first, you know, when you first log into Google Analytics, you've got it all set up. Um, there are some settings that you're going to want to uh, make sure are uh, totally tuned out. And so it gives you just kind of like a different um, uh, synopsis of the different things that are happening. Uh, can give you some real-time statistics. 
But in the bottom left-hand corner, you always have this gear. What that gear is going to send you over to is places where you can go ahead and manipulate the, uh, the settings so that you can be tracking things properly. But one of the big things is, is you just got to understand your tracking code. So a lot of times when you're going into your website to add Google Analytics, you're going to do one of two things. Um, if it's a Squarespace website or, you know, Wix or GoDaddy, if you have a plugin that you've added to your WordPress page that's just asking for the tracking ID, you're going to, going to go to the gear and then the middle column, click on tracking info and then tracking code. This is your Google Analytics ID, okay? If you need to add the script, you would inject this code into the header of your, uh, of your website there. So this is the tracking code that would go onto your website. There's a couple more things in these settings that you wanna go ahead and look at. Um, you wanna go ahead and activate remarketing and advertising reporting features. We always add these uh, and turn them on. Uh, the big thing about them is, is um, you're going to be able to get some really nice demographics and interest reporting. We'll go ahead and look at that in just a moment. Um, but remarketing is kind of cool because uh, based upon whatever actions the uh, uh, people took on your website, um, Google Analytics will be the way that you can kind of track that and move it forward. If by chance you have an e-commerce website, you're also going to need to go over in the third column, furthest right, you're going to have to go over to e-commerce settings and make sure that you've got this all dialed in. Uh, we have e-commerce, you want to enable it, but then there's enhanced e-commerce reporting. And what this would do is if you have like, let's say a Shopify website, which is this, what this website has, you want to be tracking different steps like, oh, I added a product to my cart or I reached checkout or I did check out. Those would be helping you understand um, what the metrics are on your e-commerce reporting. Big picture, um, you know, you've got a goal with your website, whatever that might be, a form completion or time on page or traffic or things like that. But if it's e-commerce, you want to know, you know, where people are coming from. That would be what you have in acquisition. And you want to be able to see how they're engaging. Are they putting things into the shopping cart? What is your conversion rate? That's a big one. So that's just a big overview on, uh, on kind of what's happening uh, with your settings. On the left-hand side, though, we have a, a bunch of different uh, tabs over here. And, you know, the real-time tab is kind of cool. Um, it can show you who's on your website, you know, uh, right now. What are, they, what are they looking at? And how have they been on the website? Uh, what pages are they on? Where are they when they're on your website? So real time is kind of cool if you're interested in that. I'll be honest, I don't spend a whole lot of time in there just because I'm more looking at the data to try to figure out what I can do and, and change. So let's go into these four tabs here, audience, acquisition, behavior, and conversions, okay? We're gonna spend the rest of our time really kind of diving into what each one of these um, does and how I choose to use them. Again, there's a lot of resources online about how to use Google Analytics and I've been doing it for about 10 years here in this market and I'm um, just going to show you what it is that I do and, and why. So audience, this is pretty cool. You can figure out who's on your website and um, there's a bunch of different information under here. This big overview is just going to tell you about who's coming to the website, how they're doing at a very high level, but we're going to be able to see things like demographics, um, male, female, age, et cetera, um, interests, and that we'll, we'll go into that. Geo, this is really important. You need to know where the people who are interested in your company are when they're on your website. Behavior, we'll go into that. Um, and then, you know, mobile, if it's, uh, you know, how much of your traffic is mobile and so on and so forth. So let's get into some of these numbers here. So um, one of the big things when I first start off is I'm going to go ahead and look at my date range. It's always set for the last week to do a look back on the last week. And what I prefer to do is just kind of branch it out to about a full 
you know, year to date type of a concept. There will be in your date field here, you can go ahead and click on a comparison. Sometimes you want to do a, a previous period. That's helpful on a 30 or 60 day look back so you can see where your trend lines are. Or you can look at previous year. So I like to do previous year a lot and I try to do like a year to date, year over year analysis, right? So what are we looking at here? Well, users on the website, that's, um, you know, individual IP addresses visiting your site. Uh, new users, obviously, they're new to the site in that look back period. Sessions would be the number of times people are on your website. And if you notice, as I hover over different things, you can actually get the definition, which is pretty cool. One of the big metrics that I'm always looking at is actually average session duration and bounce rate. Pages per session is also good. One of the data analysis pieces on um, you know, people coming into your website is, let's say that someone comes in from uh, a Google search and they spend on average two minutes on the website. Let's say that you have a digital ad somewhere and they spend uh, an average of one minute on the website. You could then say that uh, the value, uh, just on a real quick analysis, the value of that organic search uh, traffic is a little bit higher because they're spending more time on the website. Bounce rate is one that I look at. You want to have a low bounce rate. Um, a bounce rate is uh, the percentage of single page sessions in which there was no interaction with the page. It has a duration of zero seconds. So for some reason, it was maybe uh, uh, somebody got to the website and they did not mean to get there or they closed it out right away. You want to have a really low bounce rate. High bounce rate, bad. Low bounce rate, good. Things like that. All right, so on overview, every single time I want you to always look View full report. It's always in the bottom right. A lot of these nice charts, they look good, but I always like to click on view full report because then I can start to see things happening on just a uh, good table side of things. So um, let's dive into uh, location here. So we're in the geo tab. Let's look at location. So remember, where are people at when they're looking at this website? So it's kind of cool, you can go down into the state level and you can see that in this instance, the bounce rate is really low in Colorado, it's higher in Texas and California. Pages per session, higher, Colorado. Look at the time on page, look at the transactions. Ultimately, um, the big stuff that we're looking for are uh, uh, conversions. So we can see how our revenue is doing uh, with you know e-commerce here um, these charts like this are very nice you can go into um, the state and it'll actually give you either city or metro data so we can see this one here is going to be a city level data so let's say I made a campaign I knew that bringing people over from Pagosa Springs was a goal well now we're able to measure that uh, we've had more people in, from Pagosa Springs um, on this website and we're achieving that goal that's how we want to be looking at Google Analytics, generally speaking, so we can see how are we doing with, with our goals here. What is our conversion rate? All right. One of the ones that I look at a lot is mobile. Obviously, um, Google has shifted to where they're prioritizing the mobile layout of your website more than um, the desktop, just because the amount of traffic, sheer amount of traffic. And check this out. This website now, 53% of its uh, traffic, it's a pure e-commerce website, is happening on a smartphone. Desktop is 41% and tablet is 5%. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't design your websites to lay out beautifully on all of these, um, but you can also see that e-commerce on mobile is uh, definitely something that's happening on this website, so you really need to be paying attention to it. They're on the website for a minute and 19 seconds on average, compared to two minutes on the desktop and two minutes on the, on the tablet. So what I would say with that is, I've really gotta be focused on looking at the website and capturing their attention. I can see that my bounce rate is increasing 
in my mobile? What does that tell me I need to do? I need to be focusing on making sure that their experience is really important. 53% of my traffic is on a mobile device. My bounce rate is up 81% on mobile in that uh, look back period. So I need to be doing some, uh, I need to look into why that is, maybe redesign um, my mobile layout a little bit to figure out why that's happening. That's an actionable step as I started at the beginning, paralysis by analysis, that's an actionable step. My bounce rate is nearly double. I gotta go back in and see what the heck is going. Now we've got a lot more money coming in, um, but our pages are down and uh, our bounce rate um, is up. So that, that's an actionable step that I need to take on this website here. Demographics can be really fun too, just to get an understanding of who's on your website and how they're engaging. You know, what would I do with this type of data? That's a great question. So what I would be looking for is when I'm setting up my Google ads, I can tell that, um, you know, 55 to 64 and 65 and up, these are, these are what we're looking for in terms of who's on the website. So I would probably want to gear my advertising to people that are in these age ranges. All of that data is available or those settings are available for targeting inside of Google ads, whether they're search ads or so on and so forth. And this website, it's a home decor site, uh, is overwhelmingly female, um, 77%. Um, and you can even, you can even drop down into, into bigger, um, analysis on this to see, you know, how are they spending the time on the page? So obviously 55 to 64 has a minute 48, 65 and up has a minute and eight, 45 to 54 is a minute. So you see how I'm using this information. But look at this. This is kind of a surprise. It's an, a bit of an anomaly. Look at how long people are spending on the website and younger demographics. That may be an opportunity there. Specifically, I think there's an opportunity with 35 to 44. They probably have a little bit more discretionary income. Well, let's go ahead and do something called a secondary dimension. We're going to open up and go even deeper into this. So I could go in and look at this type of stuff with where do they come from? So now I can say that how are the 55 to 64 folks getting in? Google, Google, Google organic. These are ads. These are organic. This is Pinterest. So now you can add another layer of analysis. I want to show everybody this again. We're going to come into this secondary dimension from a different angle. Okay. Very interesting stuff. I'm also going to touch on this interest thing real quick. Um, so look at all this information. Incredible. What are they also interested in? What is this data? Well, Google has cookies um, that they set on your computer and they know essentially what you're interested in. Where, where do you have certain amounts of uh, affinity or likelihood to be visiting certain websites? What I can do is take this data and say, I want to set up a Google ad campaign that targets people who are also interested in these um, uh, types of websites. So let's say I go to a food and dining, like a 30 minute chef, there's a chef blog that's got recipes. I can advertise my home decor uh, display ads on those websites. Google, this is how Google has become Google is because of the, um, the ability to take the information in Google Analytics and translate it into pay, paid advertising, whether that's display or search. Um, these uh, types of affinities, these interests that we're looking at, these are always available to us in either search or display ad campaigns. So very nice, very nice information here. Um, let's go, let's go move forward into some of these other ones. I want to leave time for questions. I could go on for hours with this stuff. I love the data. Okay. So when we're doing advertising, generally speaking, we have people coming from a lot of different ways uh, to the website and, um, Organic search is pretty awesome. That's your number one rate of return always. And we're looking at our acquisition overview and it's got some really nice pie charts and things of that nature. Um, so organic search, you earn traffic, paid search. That would be like a Google search ad or maybe even a Google shopping ad. 
Um, social, that would be all the different, uh, we'll, we'll dive down into it. Email would be an email newsletter. Display ad, that would be either like advertising on the chef blog page or advertising on um, uh, remarketing. Direct, they know your website name and they're coming right in and then referral. So let's just kind of dive into like, let's just say social real quick. All right, so it's nice to be able to see the different charts, what they look like. Look at this, Pinterest. Our Pinterest traffic is down 28 seconds per. Our Facebook traffic is up 55 seconds per. So look at, look at how I'm gonna do this little quick data analysis here. Facebook, five pages per, 55 seconds per. 138 people came from Facebook. 892 came from Pinterest, but look at these bounce rates and the page views. What I would say at this point is that Facebook, generally speaking, it's a more engaged person coming to the website. I would say now there is an opportunity to work our Facebook group a little bit and see if we can't get more people coming to this website, because to me, that looks like a good user. Um, Yelp, this would be like organic Yelp. Instagram, YouTube, Instagram stories. So you can see, you can also see uh, that Pinterest is actually generating some revenue for us as well. So that's another thing that we got to consider always is what are our e-commerce conversion rate, you see? Always important. Um, I'm going to go back up a level. Let's go into email. Okay. So what we're looking at here are the landing pages that, uh, that these people are visiting when they click on the email. So I've got an email newsletter. I use uh, MailChimp for this account. And these are the different lists here. What it can tell us is what is our e-commerce so it looks like we're making some money on sessions that um, are coming from our e-commerce uh, email newsletters. This can, uh, um, can be a pretty big rabbit hole. Um, one of the things that's pretty nice to look at though on your acquisition is you just wanna be monitoring this um, to try to identify trends um, you know, look at things like bounce rate. Now, remember, see all channels, click here. We can get that big chart again. I tend to like to look at things this way because then I can see the numbers side by side. So our organic search traffic coming to the website on the same time period is 95%. If I had a goal of increasing my organic search by a certain percentage, you know, this is how I would measure that. So if you have a goal, you're like, ah, I need more organic search, then this is how this is how you would measure that under acquisition, all traffic, channels, you know, that kind of a thing. Our bounce rate is increasing, but also our e-commerce conversion rate is too. So sometimes you gotta weigh what's going on, like, okay, the bounce rate is increasing. What could that be related to? There could be a lot of factors that are going into that, but our transactions on organic search are definitely working on this website. So we're pretty happy about that. Let's, uh, let's go to some of these others. I wanna save time for, for questions. There's a couple of other ones that I really wanna look at. Um, so behavior, I like to go straight to, um, instead of the overview, I like to go to site content, all pages. This is where you can see how every page on your website is actually performing. Um, what would be the action steps that would come from something like this? Well, if you see that uh, you have a big exit rate on a certain page, then you need to figure out how to plug that leak. Think of this like a, uh, um, a plumbing system, right? And we're going to look at a really confusing, fun-looking chart in just a second. But what we can tell is that uh, if we have an exit rate that seems really high, for instance, um, we need to maybe figure out why that is. So the 
Durango Bear Ceramic Drip Coffee Mug. It's been a pretty popular product for people to look at. But look at our exit rate on this page. That's really high compared to everything else. Meaning they're stopping their, their time on your website. They're clicking X. They're going up to the you know tab and clicking X. They're getting out uh, of your website. That's what an exit is. And so what we really want to do is go, well, what the heck is going on? Why is this, why is this not working? And go look at that page. Apparently we have something going on where we're getting a lot of traffic to it, but time on page is not a lot. And the, uh, exit rate is really high. So this is one where what is my action step? I got to look at this page and fix it. Everything else kind of looks looks okay. Here's another one. Oh, it's a variant of that same thing. We might might have something going on here that we need to look at. Look at the exit rate on that. So when you're doing data analysis, you're also looking for numbers that are much higher or much lower than what your average is. So I'm looking for stuff that is jumping off the page going, well, what, what's going on here? Why is our cart up 263%? Why? What did we do? You know? Good question to always ask, why? Now, these types of reports, um, you can obviously go to larger numbers of pages. And now I can I can really drive down dive down deeper into a lot more pages. Um, I'm going to make a, a outside the box um, comment at this time. Um, we talked a little bit about 301 redirects before, but you can really mess up your Google Analytics if you build a new website. So this is kind of like a warning. I built a new website. I have all my URL structure from the old website. To the best of your ability, you want to match your URL structure so that you have the ability to continue to compare that data year over year and time over time, if that makes sense. I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you change your page structure and your URLs, uh, you could have a pretty big problem here. Let's go into the goals piece really quickly. Drop down. Oh, no, there was one other thing in, in uh, so behavior flow. This is a that wild chart that I was telling you about. So what this is looking at just as a big high level viewpoint. What is the first interaction? What is the second interaction? Third interaction, fourth interaction. Um, when they get to your website, that's what your landing page is. And you could follow everything through this particular segment. So they got to the landing page of the home page. What are they doing next? Are they searching for products? Are they visiting all the collections? Are they looking at the page? Uh, What you can find out here, like let's look at that coffee mug. Remember, we're having a big drop. What's going on? To me, this is a, uh, we've got a pretty big problem happening right here where we have a big drop off happening. This is where you can start to see, do the pages have a hole in them? Uh, do we need to plug the leak? This is a way to look at that visually. It's called behavior flow. Last thing I want to look at here briefly is just uh, just the goals. So in a lot of instances, what we're trying to do is understand um, if you have like a, a form completion or things like that, you can set up custom goals and then you can figure out how that's working for whichever acquisition source like organic or social or whatever referral traffic to pour more money or effort or time into that. If you have an e-commerce website, what you're really looking for is uh, you want to be looking at a couple of different metrics like revenue, obviously, but e-commerce conversion rate, transactions, average order value. 
this is tremendously helpful from a product standpoint, from a, uh, um, like what's selling? Okay, this is selling pretty good. I should order my action step. I should order more of these to sell. Um, E-commerce conversion rate, what is this? This is the number of sessions that are happening that are actually producing a conversion. So if it went from 0.37 to 1.12, that's a good, good transition. That's what we wanna see. This is a higher level, like what categories of products are selling well online. This is a conversion piece that we're looking at. I also wanna look at something else here, multi-channel funnels. This is a pretty good one to look at. Like, so I may click on a paid search ad and also have organic search and email as part of my conversion story. So people are obviously um, working or coming to your website with a lot of different journeys uh, to get to the website. And this is about how are people converting? Well, let's go a little bit, um, little bit deeper to top conversion paths. Now look at this. It starts with an email, turns into a conversion. It starts with an organic search. Then they type it back in, conversion. Email, typed it in, another email. Paid search, then they do an organic search and then paid search again. So you can see how these different journeys, customer journeys can be related to one another. It's a pretty interesting uh, way to look at um, uh, how people are engaging with your website in various different ways. Um, just, a, just a really nice way to understand how people are converting. That's also kind of a plumbing look. You know, how are people um, getting to the website? Are they leaking off uh, and going somewhere else? We definitely want to look at those. There's another one in here that I like to find. And um, this is the one right here. So let's say that I know how much I'm spending in paid search and look at my conversions that are happening in here. I wanna understand, is it worth it? Is it worth what I'm spending in paid search? Should I be putting more money into um, organic search, or should I be putting more effort into my email newsletter? Or because people know about Tippy Canoe, are they going right into, into the website and making those conversions? So this is a pretty, pretty nice way to, uh, to work on all of this information and understand how people are engaging uh, with your website and which methods or channels are the ones that are producing the results for you. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the big ways of how I'm, I'm looking at and using Google Analytics. And um, I guess at this time, if we have any, any questions, um, I'd be happy to uh, kind of take any questions that anybody might have. Okay, yeah, thanks, Paul. That was awesome. Um, if anyone has any questions, pop them down into the Q&A. All right, well, we can also, as usual, include your email address in the follow-up um, of the recorded version of the webinar. And um, I'm sure you will continue to be busy with questions from businesses with all this as everyone's going online. So thank you, Paul, for this information. Really helpful and appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to share some knowledge and thank you for all your hard work, MJ. I think you and the team have done a, done a fab fabulous job making this happen, so. Thanks, well, thanks for the idea. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, great. Well, everyone have a good Friday. Enjoy the sun, be responsible, and uh, we'll talk to you. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.